new speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, joins us now. Do you do a good order? Uh, reasonable, I would Would you thought. like to just uh, oh, give us an word. example? No, try and put order amongst uh, us. I, I'm not sure whether it should be me or my parrot. He's even better at doing <laughs> order, order, you know, in fairness to him. He's got it to a death. When you, when you really want to make an emphatic order, order, how, do, how does it sound? I've got a good voice, that's the one well, come thing. come on, give I've us a blast. Powerful. The one thing I would say is it's that northern voice that yes. echoes. Oh, it's order, order, yes. you know, yes. when it's needed. But what I would like to say is I hope I don't have to use order, order very often. You are unique in that people seem to like you in the House <laughs> of Commons. Uh, John Burke was very divisive. You either loved him or hated him. Do you worry in your darkest moments, Sir Lindsay, that you'll end up like John Burke on Italian TV doing this. Have we got the Italian TV? Yeah, we have. In Italiano lo sa dire ordine? Ordine. In Italiano? Ordine. Ordine. Ordine! Ordine! John Berko, grazie. Things got even more embarrassing because he ended up on a bus in South London doing the same thing for the people on the bus. Look. <laughs> I mean, is that, is that your darkest fear, that you'll end up basically doing order, order to, to public consumption around the world? It shows there's a life after being Speaker at the House of Commons, <laughs> isn't it? That's what I would say. So, Lindsay, you know, tell it us... It proves that you still want it. We know a lot about John Burke. He sort of became a personality in his own right. Um, well, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what people should know about you. It's an interesting position, the Speaker, isn't it? Because it's politically neutral, but, of course, you're there as an MP from a political party. What, what I would say is I'm the 158th Speaker of the House of mm. Commons. And we all have a different style. And I want to bring a different style to the House. Mm. Um, I want the House to have a better image. I want an image that actually people respect the House of Commons, respect democracy. And I feel that we've lost our way with the public trust. I want to try and bring the Chamber together. I want to take the hatred out of the Chamber mm. because it became very venomous, the way that people are speaking to each other. I want to try and calm that down. Political debate is important, that's what it's all about. But it's the style in which the chamber's operating. And it, I want to put a The new pictures style. that we're watching are very interesting as well because uh, you, it is tradition, isn't it, that you're dragged to Absolutely. the speaker's chair I've never reluctantly. I've seen many fight, though, have you? <laughs> <laughs> we're all really running, you know. Uh, I mean, it's, it's hard. Test. You don't want to lose the theatrics of the Commons no. because actually that's what makes it a special place. We want of to course. have passion, you want to have flair, you want to have charisma. You don't want to get rid of all that. You want to get rid of the nastiness and the toxicity. Mm -hmm. You've come at a time when social media in particular is driving a very vicious treatment of politicians. You know, female MPs getting the most appalling death threats and so on. Mm. What can we do about that? Well, I've got, I've got to be honest. It is totally unacceptable. What I'm very concerned about, that women and ethnic minority MPs are getting the worst of this. They're taking the biggest brunt. The fact is that stops people coming forward. Where does democracy go if people don't feel or wish to stand because of what happens on social media. So what I would say is that part of my other role was security of the House of Commons. I chaired the security committee that looked mm -hmm. into this. And what we've got to do is make sure we put real support in there, real protection for MPs, and make sure that they are not on their own, that we do monitor what goes on and what is being mm -hmm. said. And we prosecute. And that is the job of the police. During the day, you look yeah. after a menagerie of human beings, and then at home, <laughs> you have a genuine menagerie. Uh, you have Boris the parrot, who has messy feathers and talks a lot. You have yeah. Gordon the Rottweiler dog with a big clunking paw. <laughs> you have Betty the terrier. You admire Betty Boothroyd, your Maggie predecessor. The Maggie the tortoise. Patrick the cat. You used to have a pair of lovebirds called John and Edwina. <laughs> <laughs> which is, well... Too much detail. Provocative. <laughs> uh, uh, Boris and Patrick are currently living with you in Speaker's house with, with you and your wife. You obviously, you like animals. We do. My wife's... A soft touch for animals. Oh. And our little vets, you'll phone up, we've got a rescue cat. A hen was walking down the main road in Shirley. So what did they do? They phoned my wife up and said, I wonder if you can help. We know you've got a couple of hens at home. Would you take this rescue hen that we've got? What it was doing in the middle of Chorley during the day, I'm not quite sure. And, of course, my wife doesn't say no. What she happened to the lovebirds yes. at John and Edwina? Um, natural end. <laughs> really? They died. That's a natural how, how, how that symbolic, yeah. how symbolic. We were just talking uh, before you appeared in the studio about Tom Watson, former deputy yeah. leader of the Labour Party, saying, and he said it on this programme, actually, that it should be the civic duty of politicians who want to be held to account that they, that they appear 
in front of their voters, the audience, and be interviewed and challenged. Uh, However, in the election campaign, we saw a number of politicians running scared of television interviews. What do you think about the duty incumbent upon politicians to put themselves out there and answer the tough questions? I came on this one because I think it is important. Uh, I, you know, I, I think politicians do need to be interviewed and I think they need to be able to, to account. Mm. I think there's a good balance between the media respecting the politician as well, and I think we've got to rebuild that trust between two. I think we've mm. lost that along the way. Do you think the media is partly at fault? Because that's what some politicians would say. I, I, I would say I think I think there's been a real love-hate relationship, and hate was managing to take over a little bit. What I would say is, I think quite rightly, news and information is so important mm. to us, and I think politicians should come out and speak. And during the election, you're absolutely right. You know. There was silence from some politicians. Mm. What I would say is I think it's important that we put the views across. Because in the end, it is the electorate that will decide. Mm. And they are informed usually because of what they've seen on the media. And if you're not giving your side of the story, there is a gap. And I don't believe there should be a gap. Incredibly, yeah. uh, soon after your appointment, just before the election, you were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I mean, that's a hell of a thing to suddenly discover you're just taking on this massive job. It got worse than that. It was 10 days before election day, yeah. believe it or not. And my wife had made an appointment at my local... You'd lost a load of weight, hadn't you? And everybody was speculating, what's wrong with it? You'd I lost felt three really stone, well. Then? I lost three stone. Mm. It, and I was thinking, getting up in the morning, having a meal, and then not having a meal till late at night. I was going all day. I'd been going like this for months, with different events. I'm always keeping active. And I was drinking a lot of coke because I was thirsty, but the worst thing I could do is have full-fat mm. coke, but mm. that's giving me the energy. And my wife made this appointment. They did the blood test. I went to the doctor and said, you're going straight down to Chorley A&E. Okay. Thankfully, it should be up 24 hours, but I went in the period of 12 hours and I got there and they said straight away, Luke, we're going to keep you in. I said, I can't. I'm in the middle of a general Do election. Do you not understand? <laughs> I've, got to get, I've got to get re-elected, you know. First of all, I could be Never the shortest speaker in history. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I've got to do some. And in fairness, they were very good. They patched me up. They yeah. said, Luke, you've got to take this seriously. This is really bad. And from there, I've got to inject food. <laughs> Four times a day. Four times a day. Four times and a Theresa day. And Theresa May offered advice, didn't she? She was very good. Because she had and the I used the advice be... last night. And she, sorry? I used Theresa May's advice last night. I suddenly hit a low. I was just about to go into the chair. Mm. And I tested. I've got a monitor. I put it on my arm just to check where I am. And it said, very low. I, and she said to me, whatever you do, have some jelly babies. I, mm. I managed to get two jelly babies. I went into the chamber. I was fine. Brilliant. So Because she, she had the great diagnosis she uh, did, when she did, was Home Secretary. Mm. She did indeed. And what she was as an inspiration, that she was a Prime Minister managing type yeah. 1 diabetes. And to me, if you can be Prime Minister, I can be Speaker of the House. Yeah. And what I wanted to do was speak out. It's not I feel sorry for myself. Mm. I've not. But I'm bothered to others to show, actually, yes, Let's be open about it. Yes, I did have an illness. Yes, it's diabetes, but I can do a job yeah. and control and the diabetes. do you have a favourite colour jelly baby or not? Yes, I'll be quite honest <laughs> yeah. with you. Yellow. Yeah. Lemon bond. I think they're my yeah. favourite. You know what? Those are all, all the tough political <laughs> yeah. questions. You had me right to the point politicians... where you went yellow on the jelly babies. Um, and at that point, we lost each other. I've not brought them with me. Uh, Everybody knows the green ones are the best. Just before we <laughs> let you go, uh, speakers of the House are normally offered peerages. Oh, granted peerages yes. when they leave. John Burko wasn't. Is that I, unjust? I, 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 what I said, and I'm quite honest about this, every speaker has been offered it. I don't think you should break with that tradition. Mm. I think that tradition is there. It is not for me to make that decision, but I fully support the fact that he should be offered it. He did ten years in the House, whatever people might think. It, you know, people say it was my might love or hate him. Mm -hmm. The fact is, he did duty to the House. He made many changes, and I believe, personally, it should be offered to him. You know what? I agree with you. I think he did serve the House of Commons. It didn't it? And he wasn't everyone's yes. cup of tea, but he, yeah. he did his best, and that's all you can ask from public service. So, Lindsay, best of luck with your role. Thank you. Good we'll luck. You've got you. the Brexit Parliament. <laughs> yeah. My goodness.